Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today we got a, a mixed bag of a few things we want to want to play with. Um, the one of the first questions that came up was a, a quick review of the one legged squat exercise. Um, basically, that we're we're working to to tone up the vastus medialis in the uh, in the thigh bone. So the the muscle that runs from the hip down to the patella, the kneecap, and runs down the center of the of the thigh. And it's the only thigh muscle that connects the hip bone to the knee bone. So um, it has the effect of securing the patella, which is really cool in and of itself. But it's also really important for being able to engage the qua and to be able to feel comfortable supporting yourself. So it's something that we played with um, a few weeks back. And I'd like to go over that again to just to reacquaint you with that, that exercise because it, it's something that I found very helpful in rehabilitation for a uh, torn meniscus that I had last year, I guess about, about this time last year, I tore a meniscus and had a very, ago. no, it was last year. Yeah. So it was uh, 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 actually tore meniscus in both knees and so the knees got very swelled up and it was a lot of pain. And so what I, uh, uh, one of the things I did was to work with the, this particular muscle, which took a lot of the strain off of the knees themselves and put it onto my thighs, which, you know, actually is what common thighs are there to do. So uh, let's just, uh, let's just take a look at that. And, uh, one way to do it is just get a something that you can use as a, as a support. This is not very supportive because it's a rolling thing, but uh, it'll uh, give you the idea. You get something that's a little, little, little uh, sturdier and you bring your foot. Let me go back here. There we go. Good. So put my foot out so that I want to get my knee so that it is pretty much over the front part of my foot, over the ball of the foot. And so that the, the knee, the shin bone is just slightly forward of vertical. Not so much that I'm feeling it out into the, the toes and not back in, in the, uh, 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 not back so far that I'm, I'm, I'm taking the weight into my back leg. But I wanna feel the, the weight transfer pretty much straight down into the floor. So right down, and in, in this case, I wanna go through the heel. So I'm gonna feel the ball of my foot. That's gonna give me an energetic connection, but the weight is gonna go straight down into the ball of the foot. And the idea here is I'm gonna go drop straight down and use this as my support so that I just drop straight down. And notice that my knee is not moving forward when I do this. And I want to feel that, that, that connection. I'm also not twisting. So what I'm ordinarily, whenever I'm, I'm releasing the qual, what I'll be doing, I'll spiraling down, right? I'll spiral down to the left, spiral down to the right. In this case, I'm going to just got, drop straight down so that I feel the load being taken right onto that, that vastus medialis. And this is a, uh, a rehabilitative exercise. This is something to help reclaim lost territory, something to help build up tissue, which probably gets underserved by your day-to-day -day activities. Very few exercises we do actually work in that, unless you do a lot of time, say, kicking a soccer ball or something like that, you're probably not getting a lot of, a lot of workout with, your, with that muscle. But it's a really important one for its passive support in the leg. So we'll do that. So just you sink and you just drop straight down. And you don't have to go down very far. You'll, you'll notice there, there's a point there where you, you feel it's doing you the most good and then you come up. You can work up to it so that you can drop 
all the way down if you like, but just drop straight down and come up. And you want to really feel that. And you know, you can do like 10 reps of that and get that, get that strong feeling going there. So if I turn it this way so that you can see more from this angle, let me actually let me take my right leg this time. I've set the set the knee. I'm going to go take the load straight down into into that right leg. So you're feeling that the 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 leg is getting a workout. And we're working very externally right now. This is not not so much of a of a internal exercise. This is more rehabilitating the structure so that you can then when you load up boom your your legs feel at ease taking that in and then also if you're let us addresses a, a, a another question that scott had which is you know how come one qual is well is gives more, allows me to release more than the other one. And a lot of it has to do with this very thing, whether you are, your legs feel strong enough to be able to say, oh yeah, I can, I can go, 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 go. I can, I can release and be able to sink down. And if, if I don't feel really certain about that, then maybe I, I want to go down that far, you know, or turn that far. So it's the strength of your legs it goes a long way toward being able to release your qual. Similarly, if you're going into say a horse stance, you know, a ma bo, you know, you're, you're out nice wide stance and you sink down and you want to be able to, to drop down into a fairly low stance. You want to have that, that strength in your, in your thighs and you want to also have it coming straight up through the vastus medialis so you're getting a uh, uh, a really solid connection with the earth and so then but it the the stronger your legs are the easier it is to be able to to make that happen did that work for you scott um, yeah, could you just that last thing that you just did? Could you could you give us a side view of that? Of the uh, sure. So this is also you can do it using a uh, a chair to develop, you know, get the confidence because a lot of this has to do with confidence. You don't want to fall over. If you're feeling like you're you're going to fall over, you're going to go into weird kind of compensatory muscular contraction. So you want to make this really clean. So if you you got it like here and you grab you grab a chair like that and you sink down and you go down so that you're you're able to feel that 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 connection. And notice that I'm my body is centered over my over the the centers of my feet. Right? You want to feel like into the balls of your feet particularly. So what some people teach a uh, mopo, a teach a horse stance where your your spine is vertical and you're like that. And I'm not a big fan of that because it creates strain on the knees that I think is unnecessary. And I don't believe it energetically uh, uh, as helpful as, as being able to really go with the structure of the body so you can get down nice and low here and remain rooted even though you're in a very low stance and this is great for developing leg strength and chi circulation it really builds up a lot of uh, a lot of juice perfect that help? good yeah great that's great anybody great. have any questions on any of that nope okay cool Okay, moving on. Um, been talking about splitting energy and um, 
last week we were talking about that. And basically the idea of split is that you're moving in two different directions and you are creating a gin and a gin being a, an expression of energy through the body, a gin that is um, unique, that it, it's a composite gin. In other words, it's made of, of a couple of other gins, but it becomes its own thing. There's a, an emergent property of the fact of the two gins moving in opposition. So let's say, you know, we, a very simple one is just going like this, right? Where you're, you're, you're splitting, you're pulling these two apart. So if you just do it muscularly, as we demonstrated last week, if you grab your hands and you just pull with your, with your muscles, muscular contraction, that is one thing that's going to give you lead. That's going to give you a certain, there's a certain thing, but there's actually a very limited amount of power that you can, you can generate that way. Whereas with a gin, you get this effortless power and you do that by manifesting uh, two different gins at the same time and with using by creating a state of awareness that allows you to do to these two things very well at the same time and therefore creating a, a separate thing so the thing is to be able to do that is to you're not pulling with your shoulder you're reaching with your elbow so you're reaching with your elbow and then your wrist so you're pulling in these two different directions elbow wrist and you feel the separation as you do that and because there when you do that you want to do it in a way that creates it as both are part of one system one energy circuit so you're going like this and you're you're separating and your hands are connected up and you can feel the tingling that that accompanies that that chi flow so if we're going like this and we're separating we want to get it so that there's elbow wrist And we go the other way, elbow, wrist. And do that and just hold that. So you're going like this and you're pulling your elbows, your wrists, and you're also establishing your energetic coherence with your index fingers. You're feeling your fingers. So just feel into that and notice the energy production, the energy that gets produced by that splitting uh, action. So the split itself is one of the uh, one of the primary eight energy gates of uh, of Tai Chi Chuan, the, the Ba Men, and it allows you to access these elemental forces, powers, energies that are characteristic of Tai Chi, and. What I want to talk about today, so that's kind of a review of what we did last week, and it, the idea is how do we get to where we can do it quickly, abruptly. So that's a um, that's a separate thing because the split energy works best if you can do it and have it instantaneous. That there's an an abruptness. To the, to the split. It's one thing to explore it slowly as we're doing. The other thing is how do I you know, do it in a way that that is able to create a ripping effect? And we're talking about application here. We're talking about uh, doing it as a martial technique. And even if you never actually do it to pop someone's shoulder out or or you know, do do someone uh, some harm. You are 
you benefit from the ability to activate those qualities because what's happening is you're overriding a primitive impulse at the pre-conscious level to whenever you do something quickly to immediately shift back into a really primitive way of, of doing it, which uses a lot of Lee, a lot of muscular contraction. And you'll notice that it's anytime you are asked to speed up something that maybe you can do fairly easily uh, at a slow pace and if you have to speed it up a, a lot, then there's a tendency to actually get caught up in the in, in, in muscle power in, in doing that. So being able to train splitting energy requires first doing it slow so you can establish these patterns and then you gradually increase the speed and then you do it with resistance and you can actually do it with resistance at, uh, at the same time just so you can get the get that feeling of like whoa what's that what does that feel like to to engage engage elbows engage elbows and wrists you know and getting those those together so so uh, let's stand up and take uh, play with this a little bit All right, so step out. So let's first establish our three pillars. Feel the balls of both feet. Knees are unlocked. Feel yourself sinking into the earth. Relax the quad. Feel that sense of dropping down. Sung. Reach with the crown of your head. And open the jade pillow gate, the base of the skull. Tuck in the chin. Relax your lower back and allow your coccyx to drop. Feel the opposition between the crown of your head and your tailbone, lengthening your spine. Reach with your elbows, opening the shoulder gates. Reach with the fingers. Can you read that? Oh no, it's just Lynn. Okay. Lynn, Lynn's on her way home. So you want to feel that energetic connection throughout. Feel your elbows, set your elbows, and reach with your wrists. Bring your arms in front, reaching with the wrists, fingers are relaxed. Reach with the elbows, open the shoulder joints. Reach with the fingers. Feel the balls of your feet. Reach with the crown. Feel that connection throughout your body. Reach with your elbows down. Reach with your wrists. The 
Feel the chi. Feel the whole body energetic connection. Let your elbows reach with your wrists. Reach with the fingers. Now feel your elbows and reach, extend, open with your elbows. We're just focusing on the elbows right now and feel that connection, what that feels like to bring your awareness to the elbows. Now feel your wrists and reach with the wrists. Open, reach with the fingers. Feel the elbows, set the elbows. Reach with the wrists, bring your hands in. Reach with the elbows, reach with the wrists. Feel that connection, reach with the fingers. Feel that separation. Reach with the wrists. This time, so we're splitting here. We're feeling that pull. So feel, reach with your elbows and speed it up just a little bit and feel that, maintain that connection as you continue. Good. Bring your right hand up. and reach and separate. Feel that connection that, and feel your left hand up. And separate, split, open. Split. Speeding it up ever so slightly, get it, get the feeling. So it's a very easy thing to do. You're reaching, you're not pushing, you're not tensing, you're opening. And there is a trust that you develop that, that it's gonna do the work, even if there's no muscular tension involved. And that takes, some testing that takes, takes doing it and feeling the resistance. But for right now, we're just feeling the opening and just getting that sense of what that takes. And now bring this in and we're going to bring the right hand up, left hand down. Left hand up, right hand down. Spiral down and turn. Boom.
So same thing, elbows, wrists, fingers. Elbows, wrists, fingers. So then it becomes kind of a whip-like action. That whenever the muscles get out of the way, you can get that splitting energy pulling in two different directions and it creates its own power, its own jin. Hmm. Bring your hands down. You just feel the energy that's being generated by those movements. Spiral down, step in, deep breath. Take a seat, please. How'd that feel, Stan? You're on mute. <laughs> of course. Yes, yeah, nice. I feel that energy. I uh, and it's it's getting much stronger now. I may not have the right side and all that, but uh, I'm noticing something, and that's great. Thank you. Good, good, Rick. You opened up the private rooms. <laughs> there were a whole bunch of private rooms in there, and they unlit. Open up! And it was Open. Like, like everybody ran in and danced. It was just something. It was something. Good, and good. Because that, that's, yeah, that, <laughs> that's how we do it. That's it, it, you know, you can, you can practice forever if you don't know how to do that. It, you never get the, you never get the, the, the martial aspect of, of Taiji Tram. Being for able for to, me, it was a thumping beat. It was the thumping beat. A thumping beat. <laughs> 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 Good. Please mute Stan. Okay. You're, you've been requested. Good. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Uh, anybody else? How'd that go? Okay. Good, good, good. All right. Um, so the, uh, and, and, and this applies, I mean, for me, I, 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 I feel it in on the tennis court when I'm playing. It's the same idea there is there's a tendency to when you're when you're moving quickly to to bunch up your muscles but to be able to get the arms to stay relaxed and and be able to make a a a, a stroke using gin is um, it's good practice for this because you're training your mind to control your nervous system to override the primitive response that dictates you to go back to the the crude muscular tension. JB, you had something? Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Since you, the way you taught us repulse monkey with that splitting energy, for you Californians out there who have access to swimming pools, it's perfect for the crawl. Repulse monkey, that reaching out with one and the elbow, the way Rick's teaching it at the same time, and then the arm coming through the hands or even, and then again, the repeat where this hand reaches and this arm goes back with the elbow. It's like doing repulse monkey in the water. Uh, and it's, it's just mind blowing how much easier that is and, and effective at the same time. Cool, thank you, that's good. 
Scott. Uh, I just have to say, I don't know what's going on in my body right now, but it definitely feels different. <laughs> different. <laughs> yeah, it it wakes it up whenever we add the element of speed to the equation. It's like, whoa, it, it's, it, it has to rewire to accommodate being able to exercise gin at that, uh, you know, at, at, a, at a faster level. So there is a, uh, there's a awakening, an awakening that occurs at that physical level. Valerie. Um, it's kind of interesting. Last night I was teaching some pretty rank beginners uh, about the validity of relaxing your shoulders, right? Uh -huh. And um, I had somebody pushing on me, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I repulsed her and I realized tonight how I did that. It was effortless anyway, because, you know, she was a beginner. Um, but I didn't engage the shoulder. Mm. It was easy to repulse her and grab her at the same time. So she didn't, you know, sit on her butt or anything. That's good. But, that's yeah. Good. Yeah, that's how it's <laughs> don't, don't hurt your, your students. It doesn't work. That's well. right, right. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, it's sinking in. Hmm. Imagine uh, that. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. It's nice when we do, we internalize this. So we don't we don't have to say, okay, now I have to do this. You know, it just it's oh, why wouldn't I do this? You know, it it just becomes your body eventually says, yeah, hey, that makes a lot of sense. But it takes it takes a while to establish confidence, you know, to get that. So you're you're you develop the trust that it's going to work. Because this, you know, the idea that the that splitting like that without a lot of muscular tension is not something that your your body mind thinks about. It doesn't it doesn't doesn't want to go there. It says no no that's 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 not going to work, dude. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me show you how to do this. We've done this before. I, I know how to do this. And you have to kind of like, you know, be nice to it. But you say, no, 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 we're going to try this new way. We're going to do it real slow here. But doing it and, and getting someone, just getting someone to grab your wrist and, and feel that and notice at what point do I, do I let go of the gin and turn back to, to muscular tension and then just keep... You know, then you back off until, okay, until you feel it. And then you start to, to develop that trust. Cool. Okay. So uh, moving on. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Scott asked for uh, uh, has some more thoughts about the elements. And uh, uh, so maybe we'll talk a little bit about that. The uh, particularly the element uh, go that governs fall where, where we're in right now. So just a quick review, the, the Chinese five elements or five stages, uh, they indicate the transitions that, that are observable in nature so that and how they correlate to human behavior and the human condition. And so they, they uh, starting in springtime, we have this expansion going from the yin of winter, which is governed by water, and it is goes into wood, which is a going from yin to yang. So there's an expansion. We're going from from the quietude of of winter, and things start to grow. They start to to reach out. And uh, so that is the wood element. And then we go from there into summer, which is governed by fire. And that's full young. And it is uh, expansion in all directions. And so then we go from there into late summer, which is governed by earth, which has a sense of of coming, the yang has come to its full completion 
and it's at a transition phase before it begins the process of going into yin. And so there is a sense of fullness or the harvest time, etc. So there's a there's that that quality, that earth, which is it's a uh, there's a neutrality about it, but also a fullness. So going from that, we begin the the movement toward yin. We're going from full on yang to to yin, and that's where there's contraction, where things start to pull in, where we start to shed unnecessary things. So that's the quality of of um, uh, metal, or that uh, the gov that governs the the fall season, and then we move to winter, which is full on yin, and that is where things get very quiet and internalized. So let's talk about the metal, and the metal is like I say, it's going from yang to yin. So there's a sense of contraction of getting dense and but also a sense of shedding of letting go of unnecessary or redundant uh thoughts behaviors attributes so you you start to let go the emotion the you know the negative emotion attached to it is grief uh, and the positive is courage so the as you start to peel off the layers, if you're very attached to the things that are you're, are gone, there's a sense of sadness or or loss. If there's if you're paring down and you're stripping down to getting to your fighting weight, then it's a sense of courage that you you're having this uh, this um, feeling that you can you are eliminating those things which are that no longer serve you. So in terms of expressing the energy uh, in Taiji or particularly in, uh, it's really seen uh, dramatically in Xing Yi, where the, you, that there is a quality to the energy which is, it's very solid, but it's also, abrupt so whatever like say you're if you're delivering a punch say with metal energy there is a quality that you pick a spot boom and you that you you go to that place and it's done different than say water element where you're you're there's a, a continuity there's a sense of flow that goes through or fire which goes in all directions and just keeps expanding forever but this is no no boom there's a there's an abruptness to it you can think of it the image of say a uh, uh, a sledgehammer on an anvil right we have metal boom bam you're pounding a sword you're you know you're you're going to working on the edge of a short and you're you're beating it and so there you uh, there's a sense of of stop and so that that quality is is there so you develop an awareness of what your range of motion is and the interesting thing about it is that you're you extend and you stop your body stops, but the energy continues, so that there there is a penetration that that extends beyond that. But the the body itself creates a form, which has it's almost like you say, okay, you're winding, you're pulling back on a rubber band, and a boom, it goes out and re reclaims the shape that it that it had established. Uh, I remember when uh, Master Chen was. I was studying boxing with him. And uh, I remember when I first started, I said, oh, should I get a, a heavy bag so I can kind of work on that? And he said, no, no, practice on a lampshade. And I said, what? He said, yeah, practice on a lampshade. Boom, boom, you're, 
you're so what it is you're learning to punch and you can gradually speed up the punches but you do it in a way which makes contact with the lampshade but causes it to vibrate but it doesn't knock over the lamp and so the same thing happens with metal that is you you establish you make contact and it it vibrates the target but it doesn't it doesn't penetrate through so you're not you're not directing through which is more wood energy it's extending through right whereas metal it's bam you're stopping so uh so that's the uh, the quality there in terms of a martial application there's a there's an abruptness to it there bam you're 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 hitting the target and you're you the energy continues but the the force the physical action stops uh, any questions on this so far just give me a let me know if we're okay to continue all good any so, uh, uh nick yeah so so if i'm interpreting what you're saying right the the there's impact but no follow through in terms of physical description yes exactly okay. that's right so there's there's not that that sense of follow through or penetration there's a bam so there's a you create a standing wave you know so if you're you're connecting with someone's jaw say over the punch there it creates a kind of a cartoon kind of a <laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah 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 boom and uh where they <laughs> you uh uh that comes with that and you rattle their cage and uh master chen would say uh, that's that's the knockout punch because you're you're creating a um uh a concussion basically <laughs> so um <laughs> after a while i stopped boxing because I, I i realized that you know i wasn't much into creating concussions and it, so it I kind of got out of that as a uh, uh, as an avocation. But uh, I I think having the technology to create a concussion at will is a good thing to have, and once you just use that that skill judiciously, and uh, only do it to bad people, uh, not to your friends. So <laughs> so that that's. Uh, that's my my conclusion on that. That's my ethics on the on on the on the on the concussion thing. So only do it to bad people. Anyway, so uh, and only uh, if threatened. And, and and yeah, if, if threatened, right? Okay, so okay, we can get into the fine de the details of the of the the moral judgments there. But the uh, uh, so anyway, so let's uh, let's play with. We got a few minutes left. Let's let's do a. Um, we'll uh, play a little bit with the metal energy and uh, yeah let's do that and actually we're going to put it in we're going to fit it in with the split also we get the the split we'll add some metal to the split so get that uh so the um so uh, all right so the uh, there's a uh, uh, in Xing Yichuan, there is a, a movement where you're where you're um, well, you're it's called Pi Chuan, which is you're using metal energy to to create a a powerful stopping force okay and uh, uh, it's a powerful strike so we're going to take that quality and just put it into something a little more uh compact since we have a few minutes later a uh, few minutes left we're gonna we'll just get that we'll just get that so that so the idea is you're going to bring your hands up the right hand on the outside and you step forward with your right foot and reach with your elbows 
step forward with your right foot, reach with the elbows, reach with your wrists, and boom. Actually, let's do even, we'll do more like Peach Ann, but you're, you're going like this, okay? So you're reaching here and you're gonna pull down with your left elbow, boom, and bring out the, the right hand. So your elbow, wrist, boom. So then step back and come up with your, uh, with your left hand on the outside this time and step forward and elbows, wrists, boom. Okay, so the right hand, step forward with the right foot, elbows, wrists. So we're splitting and boom, you're establishing your position in space. So there's two positions here, one established by the left hand, one established by the right hand. And so, but we're doing it slowly just so you can get the feel of this because it's more important you feel the energy here. Step forward to the left, boom. Step back, right hand on the outside, step forward at the right, elbow. Left hand, left foot, step back. Right hand, right foot. Left hand, left foot. The back, right hand, right foot, boom. So you get that, there is a profound metal quality to that. And you can think of, just dropping something that that uh, that effect, but also the effect of like dropping a, a hammer, it hits the floor and say like, bam, thud. So there's a thud whenever that that hand comes out. But it's the split is also key to making this work. That is the left hand coming back is drives the right hand coming forward. Step back, so the left hand on the outside and step forward to the left foot and boom. Right hand and right foot. Okay, step back and deep breath. And Close. Good. Any questions? Lynn. More a comment than a question. That felt, that seems like a great place to start trying to figure out this wrist, elbows, not shoulders, because it's, it's already up and it's all coming down. You don't have to lead out with anything. So it's like everything just falls so nicely. Great comment. Thank you. That's, good. that's, a, that's a good insight. Thank you. That's helpful. Stan. No, you're okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, question is uh, throughout this whole thing, what is the mind doing? in order to get that? That's a, good, that's a good question. What is the mind doing? Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling my hands. I feel my elbows. I feel my wrists. And then I'm pulling down like that, right? So. So there is, there is a, a familiarization process as you say, okay, which hand am I supposed to be using, which foot, et cetera. 
But once you get comfortable with that, then there's a, then there's just a, a question of, boom, you're feeling that. So what the mind is doing is executing the movement from the inside. It's saying, ah, how does this, how does this feel? You know, not even how does this feel or just feel this, because the how gets into a description and you want to, uh, you want to avoid that. So it's just a boom, you're, 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 you're there. And you get familiar with the shape. You get familiar with the, the energy that's animating the shape and you feel into that as well. So it becomes a, you know, a gradual familiarity with that quality. And then you try the, the metal energy in a variety of different shapes until the insubstantiality of the, of the metal energy becomes apparent. Because at first, all you're going to just say, I'm just doing this exercise and I'm just feeling my body and it's doing what it's doing. But just like whenever you're feeling the splitting energy, you say, oh, okay, there's something else going on here besides me flapping my arms. There's a, uh, there's, there's more going on. Same thing with metal. Metal was a very tough one for me. And uh, I wrestled with it for a number of years. And uh, then I finally asked Master Young, what, uh, okay, uh, what are you doing there? And so he, he just did this, boom, like that on my arm. And like, I... <laughs> My arm went completely numb, you know, for like 10 minutes. And uh, it's like, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> that's metal. Ah, I got it now, right? So it's a, <laughs> but, you know, kids don't try this at home. But in the, uh, you, it's a, <laughs> there is a, a, a distinct quality to that energy that uh, once you, get the feel of it, then you start to say, you can orient to that. And that's one of the things you probably need somebody who knows what they're doing in order to actually give you that, that feeling. But you can play around with it yourself and get that, get that sense of that, uh, you know, uh, the, the releasing the, the muscular tension to do that. The tendency we have with this is we go and we start to slow down as we make go to make contact. There's an there's a uh, a tendency to pump the brakes as we move into the the actual point of contact, and doing it slowly enables you to recognize that mechanism, that braking mechanism, and saying, okay, we're just gonna accelerate through the uh, the motion all the way to the end and until you get to that end and there's there's an abrupt switch where bam, done nick yeah so one of the ways i've had it explained to me is that you it is just the impact but the point of impact isn't on the surface the point of the in, a point of impact is uh, about 4 inches below the surface and that's where, and, and so it, I'm, I'm thinking as you're talking about this tendency to, to pull and br break things, break, break, break at the surface, that, that maybe that's a way of thinking about it to get around that. Okay. Okay. That, that, that's a good thing to play with. Yeah. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Great. Well, thank you all. This has been uh, lovely. Appreciate uh, appreciate it all. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Thank you, Maria. Rick. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Maria.